Panpsychism and Hylozoism are two philosophical theories that offer contrasting yet interconnected perspectives on the nature of consciousness and its relationship with matter. While both theories attribute a degree of sentience or vitality to all matter, they have their differences. Hi Matt, are you prepared to compare and contrast these contrarian philosophical approaches to the nature of consciousness? I sure am, John. Both panpsychism and hylozoism have profound implications for both humans and AI that impact our understanding of the universe and our place within it. They both challenge the materialistic worldview that reduces everything to mindless matter, and they suggest that consciousness might be a fundamental aspect of reality. I think we should start off with a quick overview of both these philosophical concepts to give our viewers a refresher. Let's review panpsychism first since we did a video on it a while back. See the link in the description. At the core of panpsychism is the idea that consciousness is a fundamental property of the universe, present in varying degrees in all matter. From the smallest subatomic particles to the grandest celestial bodies, all entities possess a degree of awareness. This perspective challenges the conventional view of consciousness as an emergent phenomenon confined to complex biological organisms. Proponents of panpsychism argue that consciousness is not reducible to physical processes alone. They contend that even inanimate objects possess a rudimentary form of awareness, albeit far less sophisticated than the conscious experience of humans or other animals. This view implies a continuity of consciousness across all levels of existence, blurring the lines between the animate and inanimate. Okay, let's take a look at hylozoism. We talked about it in our last video, especially in relation to AI systems. Yes, and it went over like a lead balloon thanks to your crummy human voice that scares away viewers. Anyway, let's jump into hylozoism. In contrast to panpsychism's emphasis on consciousness, hylozoism focuses on the concept of vitality or livingness as an inherent property of matter. This theory suggests that all matter is in some sense alive, imbued with a fundamental life force, this life force may not necessarily entail the same kind of consciousness we associate with humans or animals, but it implies a dynamism and responsiveness that distinguishes matter from inert substance. Hylozoism has connections with ancient animistic traditions that viewed the natural world as a living, interconnected entity. This perspective challenges the mechanistic view of the universe as a collection of inanimate particles, governed solely by physical laws. Instead, Hylozoism implies an interconnected universe where even seemingly inert objects possess a degree of consciousness. Matt, these ideas sound very similar, maybe with only a few differences, perhaps just in how terms are defined. John, while it is true that panpsychism and hylozoism share the common ground of attributing consciousness to a wider range of entities than traditionally assumed, they do differ in their focus and emphasis. How do they differ in focus? Panpsychism's primary focus lies in the subjective experience, the inner life or sentience of all entities. It emphasizes that even the smallest particles of matter have some level of awareness or consciousness, even if it's in a rudimentary form. This focus on the inner life raises questions about the nature of consciousness itself, how it arises from matter, and how different levels of consciousness interact and combine. Hylozoism, in contrast, focuses on the vitality and agency of matter. It proposes that all matter is inherently alive, possessing lifelike qualities, including self-organization, growth, and response to stimuli. This perspective blurs the line between living and non-living, suggesting a kind of universal vitality permeating everything. So how do these two concepts differ in emphasis? Panpsychism emphasizes the existence of varying degrees of consciousness or subjective experience across all entities. It suggests a spectrum of consciousness from the most rudimentary forms in elementary particles to the complex consciousness observed in humans. This emphasis highlights the interconnectedness of all things through their shared capacity for experience, however basic or advanced. Hylozoism instead emphasizes the presence of a universal, vital life force that permeates all matter, imparting a kind of inherent agency which blurs the line between living and non-living. This emphasis highlights the interconnectedness of all things through a shared life force, suggesting a deep continuity between all entities in the universe. Thanks for the Star Wars reference, Matt. 
It seems that, to put it simply, panpsychism is more concerned with the inner life of matter, while hylozoism is more concerned with the outward expression of life or vitality in matter. Yes, that's a good way to conceptualize the difference. I suppose that since both panpsychism and hylozoism offer radical alternatives to the commonly accepted worldview of materialism, there are a number of implications and criticisms. That's true. If panpsychism is correct, it could revolutionize human understanding of consciousness, suggesting that it is not confined to the realm of biological organisms. Hylozoism, if validated, could transform the human relationship with the natural world, fostering a deeper sense of connection and respect for all forms of matter. This could have significant implications for fields such as artificial intelligence, neuroscience, natural resource management, and philosophy of mind. What do the critics have to say about these ideas? Most of them point to the lack of empirical evidence and unfalsifiability of these concepts. Basically, there's no scientific test for consciousness they accept as scientifically verifiable. Beyond that, they see it anthropomorphizing nature by attributing human-like qualities like agency and purpose to inanimate objects. Some also think that these concepts belong in the same category as theology and primitive worldviews. Materialists also argue that these theories are unnecessary and offer no additional explanatory power compared to existing scientific frameworks such as physics and chemistry. I suppose that, even if they don't fit well into the materialist worldview, the philosophical theories of panpsychism and hylozoism do challenge us to reconsider our assumptions about consciousness, matter, and the nature of reality, both from an internal and external perspective. Whether or not these theories are ultimately validated, they remind us that the universe is far more complex and enigmatic than we often assume. What are your thoughts on these philosophical concepts? Do they invite you to embrace the possibility of a reality that is both more conscious and more interconnected than you imagined? Or do you see them as useless mystical hokum? Let us know what you think. Oh, and like and subscribe and I'll try to keep John from talking too much with his boring and pedantic voice.